G'day there and welcome to Tim's Board Game Review episode 25. Uh, in this episode I'll be reviewing Felix the Cat in the Sack. Uh, now this version happens to be the German version, which I picked up off a German guy whose name happened to be Felix. Uh, but the game is widely available in English and is language independent. Uh, the game is for three to five players and fits well into the filler category as it's got a simple set of rules and the games only take about 20 minutes to play. Uh, it is a auction based card game with some risk taking and bluffing and uh, with the goal of the game to get the most points. Um, so let's see what you get inside the box. You get, you get a set of 10 cards in five different colours. You get the mouse and the cat in the sack cards. You get mice tokens, a first player marker and a colour rule booklet. This is what the game looks like set up to play. Each player is given a set of cards and one card is randomly removed from each set. Each player takes 15 points worth of mice money. The mouse cards are placed onto the board along with the cat in the sack card. Mice money is placed onto each card based on the number printed on the card. A pool of mice money is placed off to the side to act as the bank. The game is now ready to begin. The game goes over nine rounds and each round is split into two parts. In the first part, each player takes a card, starting with the first player, and places it face down under the cat in the sack card, followed by the other players. The second part now, now begins, which is the auction phase. The first player turns over their card and announces their opening bid. Players take turns to then either raise the bid by placing more mice tokens in play, or they pass. If you pass, you take any previous money you have bid back and take mice tokens on the lowest remaining mice card. Therefore there is an incentive to pass after other people have so that you get more mice tokens when you pass. Each time someone passes, the next face down card is turned over, which therefore provides more information to the people who are left remaining in the auction. Eventually only one person will be left in the auction. They have to pay their bid to the bank and get to take all of the cats in the sack. The value of the sack is the net value of all of the cats. However, a single large dog will scare away the highest scoring cat, while a small dog will scare away the lowest scoring cat. However, if there are ever two or more dogs in the sack, they chase after each other and the remaining cats are scored as normal. After each round, if there is enough money in the bank, the mouse cards a refilled and the person who won the last sack becomes the first player and starts the next round. Clearly a key part of the game is to do with the bluffing and making people think that you've put down a really good card even though you might not have. You also want to try and make other people pass before you do so that you can collect more mice when you pass. But you might not want to push your luck too much as otherwise you might end up paying a lot of money for a low scoring set of cards. Cards range in value from 15 for a very happy looking cat down to minus 8 for a rather angry looking cat. At the end of the ninth round, players tally up all, the, all their cat cards and also get one point for each leftover mice token that they have, and with the person with the highest number of points being the winner. And so here are my ratings for this game. The components give 7 out of 10, there's nice art and good quality cards. Uh, the tokens are fairly basic but perfectly functional. Um, luck would be medium to high, you're essentially bidding on blind information and on trying to see through other people's bluffs or actions. If you have a good memory you may be able to work out towards the end what cards might be left in play. I'd rate the fun medium to high. Uh, this game is a quick and fun filler with plenty of fun trying to bluff other players. You can poke fun at players who win a dud set of cards and congratulate yourself for dropping out at the right time. So there's plenty of interaction and trash talking going on, provided you play it in the right group. Complexity would be low, uh, the game can be fully explained in a couple of minutes, it is a filler after all. Uh, the depth would be low, you can obviously look to maximise potential bluffing opportunities and you may want to hold back certain cards, but the high luck factor limits, limits the game's depth. I break the replayability medium, uh, you can get a fair bit of mileage out of the game. One limitation though is that the game is really at its best with either four or five players, so this limited range potentially limit the opportunities that you'll get to use the game as a filler. 
overall give the game a 7 out of 10. It's a solid little fun filler game that certainly fits into the filler category, but I do think it needs to be played in the correct group to really enjoy the game. So I hope you enjoyed the review, and until next time, happy gaming. See you later.